Hi, I'm Frank Peacock. I'm an emergency physician and the chief medical officer at a septoscope. And I'm going to talk about the fact that dirty stethoscopes are killing my patients. And this is a topic that I've been uh, doing research on for the past five years or so. Um, and, and I think it's become really important. Um, this is me going to work. My hospital policy is that I have to wear gowns, masks, and gloves if I'm going to go see somebody with cystic fibrosis. But you can see my stethoscope is just hanging right there. There's no policy on that. It's dirty from the last patient. And I'm going to walk in that room and evaluate her. This is what I wear during COVID. Same story, more gear. Uh, but my dirty stethoscope is hanging out there. And it's, it's really the forgotten vector. Uh, I'll show you some data on that. This is uh, a study where they cultured hands and stethoscopes. And the fingertips are where the dirty part of the hand lives, 467 aerobic cultures of 12 MRSA. Uh, and look at the stethoscope diaphragm. It's the second most dirty thing out there. We wash our hands. We don't go see any, could you imagine seeing a patient without washing your hands? The patient would be horrified. You would worry you're gonna catch something too. But our stethoscope, which has the identical bugs in greater population than the, than the palm is not washed. It's got no cover. We have gloves for the hand. We don't have gloves for the stethoscope. So the stethoscope is really the third hand. It has the identical bugs in significant quantity. And yet we smear it all over every patient. So you wash your hands and then grab your stethoscope. So what have you just done? You put those bugs right back on your hand again. And then you put them on your patient. So you're supposed to wash your stethoscope and everybody does it, right? Well, I got a couple of my residents to run around with clipboards and see what happens. And so we looked at uh, the emergency department, labor and delivery, um, the ICU, and they looked at 400 uh, healthcare provider patient interactions and exactly 4% were they cleaned according to CDC guidelines, 404% were cleaned. So when they tell you they clean their stethoscope, it's not really the truth. And you could say, well, I just work in a dirty hospital, but the second paper is down there, published in American Journal of Infection Control by Alan Mizell. They did the same thing at UCSD, about 400 patients. And they found that only 10% of the time was the stethoscope cleaned. So while they may say they're cleaning it, they really, uh, it's not happening that often, not when you observe them. So the next question I always get asked is, well, are there any randomized controlled trials that show that stethoscopes can actually carry disease and get infected in the patient? And the answer is no, there are not. And the reason is, is can you imagine this? My research assistant goes in and says, hi, sir, we're doing a study. We wanna find out if stethoscope can transfer pathogens. So will you sign this consent form that's gonna let, well, what we're gonna do is rub a, a dirty stethoscope on you and see if it makes you sick. Well, who would ever sign that consent form? It's not going to happen. So we don't have that data, but what we do have is this data. This is where um, Almeida did a study that took uh, pathogen surrogate markers. So uh, viral DNA, uh, cauliflower viral DNA, um, some bacteriophage, that sort of thing, put them on uh, stethoscopes and then put them on a mannequin to see if it was transferred to the next mannequin. 30 people came in, they did their exam, they went to the next mannequin and they could pick up all those surrogates on the second mannequin from the stethoscope. That's in the blue but they also wash their stethoscope and notice that it's still transferred over to the second mannequin. So even if you do wash it, if you're one of the rare birds that actually washes their stethoscope, according to the CDC guidelines, 60 seconds with an alcohol pad, because that's it's gotta be 60 seconds, um, you still are not gonna get them clean. Here's another study by Thaker, same bunch of, of, of surrogate markers, uh, but this is the time they actually use patients. They put the surrogate markers on patient one, and the docs came in, the nurses came in, everybody came in and examined the patient, they went to the next patient and they could pick up those surrogate markers on 28% of the second patient. So what's happening here is that the bugs are getting transferred from patient to patient. You wash your hands all day, maybe even you wash your stethoscope, but it doesn't get clean and the bugs go. So when you wanna talk about hospital acquired illness and infection, the stethoscope is the number two vector following the hands. This is a study where they wanted to evaluate, well, how, if you really do clean it. So I work in the ER, if I'm busy shift, it's, you know, I'll see 50 patients. And if I have to stethos clean my stethoscope for 60 seconds before and after each patient with a alcohol swab, that's a hundred minutes a day. I don't have a hundred minutes a day to be cleaning my stethoscope. It's not gonna happen. And even if you do it, this is, these are a couple studies where they did the uh, 60 seconds of uh, isopropyl alcohol on the stethoscope. And they found out that, see in the red there, 28% were still infected 
after they were cleaned according to the CDC guidelines. So even if you are diligent, if you're one of those 4% and actually clean their stethoscope between patients, you still are gonna only affect a third of your patients, 28%. So this is the, the system that, uh, that we have. Uh, it's called the Discover. And what you do is you wave your stethoscope underneath. It's touch-free, so your stethoscope didn't contaminate your hands and your hands don't just uh, contaminate the stethoscope. And you push into the window and a, uh, a septic barrier becomes available and it sticks to your diaphragm. And you go listen to your patient. Uh, it is acoustically invisible and it doesn't allow the transition of pathogens. Uh, you drop the cassette into the machine right there and it just comes out, there's about 400 of them. Uh, and, and the important part is it's touch free. So you're not gonna get uh, your hand bugs on it uh, when you're going to see the patient. Does it work? Well, this is the study that we did to demonstrate the barrier is functional. Uh, we took a bunch of stethoscopes, we covered them with infected urine and blood and feces and saliva and sputum uh, and then put a barrier on, randomized half of them got a barrier, half did not, they go into the incubator. And this is what we found. Um, you can see these are the controls, they're in the black and the gray. There are lots of bugs on the controls. The barriers were consistently sterile. They had nothing growing on them. And this went out for a week. Now I'm not suggesting you keep the barrier on for a week. I mean, it's a single use barrier is the plan. But if you did keep it on, it would maintain its uh, prevention of allowing bugs to get from the stethoscope onto your patient. So the patient gets an aseptic. Uh, surface. This is uh, the study that we examined. Does it affect the acoustic properties of the stethoscope? Because if it makes your stethoscope deaf, it's sort of pointless. And so we took the Littman 3200 stethoscope and the, uh, we took an entire residency class and they went into a mannequin uh, simulation room and listened to the patient with a stethoscope with and without the barrier. They were randomized to that. They didn't know which one they were using. It was held for them. Uh, and what we found out is that uh, their accuracy does not change by adding the barrier to a quality stethoscope. What was really interesting is we also did it with a disposable stethoscope and they went in and listened to the patient and it was horrifying. The disposable stethoscope without a barrier, barrier they had an 11% misdiagnosis rate. They tend to miss the diastolic murmurs, the hard ones, the ones that are important for diagnosing heart failure. And if you don't hear it, you don't diagnose it and you have a delay in your diagnosis. And what does that equal? That increased the mortality rate. Now we didn't show a mortality difference, but that we know this other data to be true. So it would be way better to use a good stethoscope with a barrier and get 100% right, then use a disposable stethoscope and get 11% wrong, number needed to harm 11. There's nothing in medicine that would allow us to have a number needed to harm of 11, but we do. It's called the disposable stethoscope, which needs to go away. And the doctors clearly preferred the better quality. This is a series of graphs from study we did of people had actually used this, the Discover system to see what their impressions were. And what you can see here is, do you find it easy to use? And 93% thought it was easy or very easy to use. So it, it's not a hard thing. 85% uh, believe that the Discover is an improvement over disposable stethoscopes. So there, you know, there's like one in seven people think they'd rather have a disposable, but majority, by overwhelming majority think it improves or significantly improves the uh, ability of you to function. Uh, with the stethoscope as it's intended. 95% of the users believe the Discover system had no impact or in actually improved their workflow. It takes a second to put this on, you go see the patient, as opposed to getting out there in the swab for 60 seconds. So it makes you more efficient. And 95% think that it's gonna be more, uh, it's gonna improve stethoscope hygiene. And the reason is, is because you actually can use this. You don't have to wash it for 60 seconds and only get a 28% remaining bacteria rate. This is 100% uh, as septic, and it takes a second. And this thinks 95% of people think it improves safe, patient safety because if we take out the number two vector after the hands and make it a septic, we've made a huge improvement. Uh, this is a recently published call to action to the CDC. CDC guidelines are present, uh, published in 2008 and then updated about a decade later. But there's been a lot of data and a lot of technological improvements since then. And so this was a committee that got that was formed and what they did, and it's emergency doctors and cardiologists, and infection control doctors and intensive care docs and, uh, and nurses and PAs and the whole shebang. And what they recommended is the CDC consider the research that's come out recently, that there are more effective solutions. And the CDC guidelines say that you should clean your stethoscope uh, when it appears dirty. Well, that's absurd. I can't see viruses. I have no idea when it appears dirty. And so they recommended that it, either you disinfect your stethoscope between every patient, we know that's tough and it's not getting done, or you use a barrier. 
So I'm going to apologize now. I know that every time you see your doctor for the rest of your life, you're going to wonder where the stethoscope has been. And that's our fault. I'll take it. I'll take responsibility for that. But there is an answer. So this is my summary. The stethoscopes are dirty, just like the hands. It's the third hand. We've been cleaning our hands for 150 years since Ignaz Semmelweis demonstrated that obstetricians who didn't wash their hands had higher death rates. But we know stethoscopes transmit bugs between patients. And we also know that nobody really cleans their stethoscope. And even when they do it, it still remains with 28% of the bugs on it. So the aseptic discover barrier prevents pathogen exposure for both you and your patients, because now you won't have to use a disposable stethoscope. And, and think about that. What is a better way of, share, of making everybody in your staff sick than making them share the same tool? I don't want somebody's stethoscope in my ears. So thank you. There's my email. Feel free to uh, uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. I appreciate your time.